is Mr. Warp himself, Don Rickles. Well, it's been since 1959 that Don Rickles has been performing in Las Vegas. That long? That long. When you, in, explain to me what it was like in 59. Well, in 59, it was, it was family style. When I say family style, the, the operation. The mafia family. <laughs> well, I don't know. You said it. I got a family. I never said, hey, I never said it. If any of you guys are around, Ed said it. No, it, they, they were good people. They really were. I mean, they ran a hotel great. I mean, I, I worked for Milton Prowl. I worked for Eddie Torres. They were all good guys. And, uh, and in those days, you, you, you get to hang out with them. And it was, uh, in other words, today when you, when you, I'm exaggerating, when you get a cup of coffee, you sign four chits and got to meet the senior vice president. Uh -huh. In those days, you called up uh, Eddie Torres on the phone and said, Eddie, can you put another couch in my room? I mean, it was very informal and very relaxing. And they catered to high rollers and it made it as they do now. But it was a different, it was a different style. And uh, it was fun. Well, why would, well, I don't know why, but your humor at that time was very cutting. Very different than than other comedians, other stand-ups. Um, you were more of ad libber and just ad libber and, and just very cutting. And was it hard for you to get work? I mean, did you have to only do Vegas type of venues at that time? Oh no! When I got to Vegas, uh, I was established somewhat. When Stan Irwin hired me in Vegas uh, at the Sahara, uh, I was known in California. And so I always say to young people, the only way to success is being different. And I certainly was different. In my very beginnings, when I was a very young man, of course it was tough for me. I mean, they never heard of what I did. Uh, but I'm, I was never mean-spirited. That's the difference. I mean, I made fun of people, but I, what I did is I made fun of all of us and exaggerated everything. Yeah. And so that became my humor, which it always was. Even as a kid, I didn't even realize that when I was in the service, I always made fun of people and, and, in a fun way. And uh, this became a performance. And then little by little, I got a beginning, middle, and an ending. And today, I'm... I'm very big, and I'm got booked on your show. Yeah, <laughs> but you, but you have guts. I mean, you always your humor had teeth in it. Where people, you would say things that people wouldn't say. What, let's tell the story about the first time that you that Frank Sinatra saw you. Uh, well, I like to preface by saying I'm the kind of guy that goes to the office Christmas party, you know, and makes fun of the boss and everybody there that's important that means your job. And Monday morning still uh -huh. have the job, so uh, that pretty much tells the story. <laughs> No, Frank, I was with the, in my single days, uh, because I'm married 36 years now to a lovely girl. She's, she'd be with me right now, but the jewelry truck blew up. <laughs> anyway, so she, uh, uh, she and I have been married 36 But previous to that, I was with this young lady, uh, I would say, you know, she, Miss Dynamite. Uh, <laughs> I had hopes of uh, winning a trophy. And so she was sitting with me one night, and we were sitting in a lounge in the sands and sipping on a martini or two, and she looked at me, and, and Frank Sinatra was sitting next to so was sitting over at another table with a bunch of guys and she looked at me and she said uh, do you know Frank Sinatra and I knew if everything worked out and I made sure I knew Frank Sinatra would be a big help it so happened at the time I did know Frank and so I said are you kidding we're very close and she said really I said I'll introduce you so I walked over to the table and I said Frank can I speak to you and he always called me Bullethead and he said what is a bullet I said listen if you'd come over to the table and just say hello I would skyrocket with this girl. Skyrocket. He said, you got it, but don't come right away. Wait a few minutes. We get back, she said, what do you say? Don't worry about it. We're simply, I said, to you, my darling, and boom. With that, Frank Sinatra came over, and the violins are playing in the lounge in those days. They had those strolling violins, and the cocktail, the glasses are tingling, and came over, he said, Don, how are you? And I got up and reeled out. I said, Frank, not now. Can't you see I'm with somebody? I don't need it now. How do I know if your album's going to sell? Leave me alone. And the whole room stopped. And he laughed his can off, thank goodness. And, and then he had uh, Ash Resnick, rest, he's gone too. Uh -huh. And they had Ash and the guys lift me up at, with security guards and carry me out of the <laughs> hotel. That's a true story. And, and uh, Lorna Loft was, uh, was saying that you and her mother yeah. knew each other very well. Judy yeah, Barlow. well, I knew Judy very well. She yeah. used to come and uh, When I was in the lounge, she was headlining in the Sahara. And she was a hell of, hell of a woman as far as a sense of humor mm -hmm. goes, besides our great talent. She had a great sense of humor. And uh, I used to stand backstage in between my sets and watch her perform. And she had a funny sense of humor. And one night I was standing backstage and she came off the stage. And I said, Judy, you got to work on your voice. And she said, really? And she had a bottle of leap for milk in her hand and spilled it over me. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, <laughs>
cute little Judy. <laughs> but she was great. Yeah. She used to have fun. And I'm de speaking, I'm delighted Lorna's on the show with me because she's a big talent, too. So mm -hmm. it's, it's fun to have her with me. Yeah, she's got a really big uh, miniseries that's up for a lot of Emmys. Yeah, that well, we, that we, <laughs> then probably I'll be working for her. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, look, with all these Dean Martin roasts, that, uh, that yeah, on we, TV, you're on TV more than uh, uh, more than that miniseries. Yeah, is, well, right? yeah we, made, we made a deal with those people. I think I'm going to be hosting mm -hmm. the, those new episodes of the Dean Martin roast, so uh -huh. it should be fun. Um, how about with the first time you went on Tonight Show? Was that was that nerve wracking for you? Were you concerned? Well, about you know, when you wouldn't go over it's there? like anything else. Ed, like you lawyer, your first case, you know, yeah. you you're a little uptight. But I was so uh, comparatively young then, and so anxious, you know. And I just went out there like I was shot out of a cannon, and just shot all my bullets one, two, three. And I was very excited. And uh, Johnny Carson, fortunately, always always had a warm spot for me, and always found me to be funny, and uh, he was a kickoff guy for me, and I went on that show, and it became a, a regular thing. It just, uh, we hit it off great. He just made me look good. Well, you, your background is in actually in formal acting. Right? Well, not really. I went to the American Academy, a lot of people don't know that. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and graduated, believe it or not, uh, and I never could get lucky as an actor at that time, and so I did stand up because I had nowhere, nowhere else to go. When I said I did stand up, I went into a little little functions and so forth and start kidding around and one thing led to another and then I got an agent to, to help me get jobs and and it was so it was a big struggle you know I don't want to take out the violin now but uh, it was a big struggle and and I wound up here at the Stardust and talking to you. Is that, does, um, does that background help, does the acting background help you well, it can't or hinder hurt. you as it, a stand-up? No it never can hinder you yeah. it was a great experience it, in fact it helped me in films that I did and and it gives you any time you can uh, get your feet wet in uh, this business, and whether it be acting or stand up, um, it's all it's very important. It gives you more and more confidence because most actors uh, are very insecure, and uh, including myself uh, when we started out, and are very shy. And so all those those lessons in the Academy of Dramatic Arts and and uh, in stand up help. How much preparation do you need to go through in in in, in like when you went to, to uh, at the, uh, the inauguration, uh, Ronald Reagan. I think, yeah. Right? I mean, did you like go through uh, character traits of the president, the vice president, um, cabinet members, and, and 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 you know think this thing through, or is it just spontaneous? For no, you? not really. I've never thought anything through. I I do a show tonight. And I I have certainly a beginning, middle, and an ending. But I uh, I never uh, I never sit and say, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? I never do that. Uh, I've been blessed with. I get out there and just wing it and. Sinatra said to me, he said, Don, uh, we're gonna, it's the president. I said, Frank, I know. It's not the head of the B'nai B'rith. I know who it is, you know. And he said, okay, but uh, do what you want. But, you know, it's the president. I said, don't worry, will you, Frank? You know, just work on your voice. And uh, we had a good time. And I went out there and did my thing and made fun of the president and good spirit and George Bush and all. And it was wonderful. And I had a good time. And do you have any plans of retiring? Why do I look bad? <laughs> you look, yeah, you look great. You look like you should be out on a golf course. I didn't say that to you. But I, I think that was out of line, Ed, for no sure. reason. Why did you turn on me? Everything was going so nice. The man turned on me. No, I don't plan to retire. I had a, a lot of expenses. And uh, I like you know, to, the, the pace you, you're going through now is a pace that uh, similar to what you did 50 years ago. Well, similar, yeah. I yeah. would say so. I, I'll give it, I have all the energy, mm -hmm. and I have all the spirit. And so I, that Viagra's working? Pardon me? Viagra works. Don't be a smart. <laughs> oh, you don't need that, Ed. You're too big. It's a very important show. <laughs> I understand there's a lot of good talk in Sparks. They're raving about it. <laughs> I want to thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us. You're at the Stardust with Lorna Luft. Yeah. Um, she does a great opening, yeah, and, and, and you just keep them rolling on there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> rolling you. out of the place, yeah, right? Well, I owe it all to Wayne Newton for right. having me here because Wayne called me and said, when I finished my deal at the Desert Inn, he mm -hmm. said, Don, join me here, and I was delighted. Yeah, and I see that you have the, the picture of uh, you and Wayne Newton on the wall there. Yeah, well, it doesn't hurt. I got a dressing room. You know. <laughs> Thank you very much, Don hey, Rickles. Bye, treat it. Thanks. Take care. I'm a nice guy, in spite of what you heard. I'm a nice guy, you can bet your little bird. That's right. Three wise men made a left, and we wind up with eight candles in the house and no toys. I love the Irish. I love you when you go to the Monsignor. I want to confess, where's the Monsignor? Then the Monsignor comes out, who wants to confess to me? <laughs> <laughs>